What's up everybody? Well, it looks like first time buyers are in for a lot more pain as now Wall Street economists are saying home affordability will not improve without a major recession. The US housing market is stuck and we are not convinced it will become unstuck anytime soon, said Bank of America economists Michael Capen and Jesse Opar. This will take many years to work itself out. There isn't a magic fix. The message for first time home buyers is one of patience and frustration. Then again, if you believe Chris Vermeer chief market strategist of the technical traders, the distress of the commercial real estate sector could impact residential real estate and cause a crash sooner than you think. He points out that the real estate sector is in trouble as borrowing costs look poised to stay higher for longer. In fact, commercial real estate foreclosures jumped 117% year over year in just the first quarter, according to data from Adam. People don't realize real estate is primed and ready for another major leg down, he said. They're buying right now because there's been a pullback, but the reality is that I think we're gonna see this collapse. So today, we're gonna dig a little deeper. We'll look at an article by Matt Egan for CNN titled, The Housing Market is Stuck Until At Least 2026, Bank of America Warned, as well as Jennifer Soar's article for Business Insider titled, The U.S. Real Estate Market is Heading for a Correction, Strategist Says, as well as Redfin's latest housing market update, and we'll unpack it all. So let's dive right in. The affordability crisis that has plagued the United States housing market for the last three years is unlikely to improve until at least 2026, according to new findings by Bank of America. After a surge in housing activity during the pandemic, it has since retreated and stabilized, Bank of America economists Michael Capant and Jesse O'Park wrote in a report last Monday. We view the forces that have reduced affordability, created a lock-in effect for homeowners, and limited housing activity will remain in place through our forecast horizon, they added. In fact, the bank said home prices will stay high and go even higher. The housing shortage will persist and mortgage rates may not fall much, even if the Federal Reserve finally delivers long delayed interest rate cuts. This is a big problem. The housing affordability crisis is at an all time high between high home prices, which started during the housing pandemic boom when the feds made money so cheap that everybody wanted to buy a house and high interest rates, which started with the Fed's war on inflation. Do you see a pattern here? Do you think the government's meddling is responsible for the crisis we're in today? Do you think we are all puppets and the Fed is the puppet master? Comment below. I really want to know, what do you guys think? Because right now, the supply of homes cannot keep up with demand. Home prices have nowhere to go but up. Now, I know real estate is very localized, but nationally, Bank of America expects home prices will climb 4.5% this year and by another 5% in 2025 before eventually dipping by 0.5% in 2026. It has been a weird combination. Mortgage rates rose substantially, but so did home prices. That typically doesn't happen, said Gavin. The major problem hurting supply is the lock-in effect or the golden handcuff effect. Sellers who locked in a record low mortgage of 3% or lower during the pandemic are reluctant to sell, limiting supply further and leaving few options for eager would-be buyers. The Bank of America strategists expect the lock-in effect will take at least six to eight years before it goes away due to the significant gap between the current mortgage rates and the rates that many homeowners already have. The wide gap between current mortgage rates and effective mortgage rates means most homeowners are unwilling to move unless forced, the economist said. Moreover, we do not expect current mortgage rates to fall much, even if the Fed cuts as we anticipate. So what's the answer? We obviously need more affordable inventory. According to Vermillion, construction for single family and multifamily starts have plateaued after a major drop last year, a pattern similar to one that flashed before the 2008 housing market correction. And Bank of America expects that housing starts, which is just a measure of newly constructed homes, to remain flat in the coming years. They report that housing starts have still not recovered from when the bubble burst in the mid 2000s. Vermillion believes that the stabilization of construction activity is due to a burst of investment to the sector, but real estate is still in trouble, especially if mortgage rates remain elevated. To me, this is a sign that things are really breaking down, and this is just a bounce, Vermillion said, of recent stabilization in construction activity. It's the last spot right now, he said, where you can squeeze a little bit of profits out of these buildings. Material and labor costs are up, and then we see the financial sector and real estate pricing really fall apart. 
heart. He does go on to say that in residential real estate, it is unlikely that home prices will crash like they did back in 2008. However, further weakening could spark a panicked sell-off among investors who have been putting cash to work in real estate companies and in things like real estate ETFs. If that happens and we do see a large influx of inventory, home prices will go down. We are already seeing some softening. According to Redfin's latest housing market update, the typical US home that sold during the four weeks ending June 23rd sold at 0.3% below the asking price. This marks the first time the typical home has sold for under the list price at this time of year since the onset of the pandemic in 2020 when the housing market basically ground to a halt. The typical home sold for exactly the list price one year ago and 2% above the list price two years ago. Additionally, 32.3% of US homes sold above the list price year over year. That is the lowest share of any late springtime since 2020 with the onset of the pandemic when the housing market was nil to none and down from 36% a year ago. 41.4% of the homes sold in the first two weeks, down from 46% a year ago. The metros with the biggest increase in the median sale price are Anaheim, California up 16%, Nassau County, New York up 14.4%, New Brunswick, New Jersey up 13.8%, Newark, New Jersey up 13.6%, and West Palm Beach up 12.7%. The metros with the biggest decrease in the median sale price are San Antonio, Texas down 2.5%, Austin, Texas down 2.5%, Dallas, Texas down 0.9%, and Fort Worth, Texas down 0.8%. Does anyone watching live in Texas? Because if you do, can you actually comment and tell us if these stats seem right to you? Do you see a lot of inventory? Do you see a lot of price reductions? I really do want to know, so comment below. Nearly 7% of the sellers dropped their asking price, the highest level since November of 2022, and up from 4.7% just a year ago. The likelihood of home selling below the asking price is rising because in certain parts of our country, there is more supply than demand for certain types of houses. New listings are up 8.2% nationwide, while pending home sales are down 4.3%, the biggest decline in four months. The metros with the biggest increase in new listings are San Jose, California up 40.6%, Miami up 22.4%, San Diego up 20.8%, Anaheim, California up 19.3%, and Phoenix up 19.2%. The metros with the biggest decrease in new listings are Chicago down 7.6%, Atlanta down 7.6%, 5%, Detroit down 2%, Minneapolis down 0.8%, and Portland, Oregon down 0.4%. With this mixed market, but undeniably unaffordable, only 21% of Americans think it's a good time to buy. Tie for the worst reading in Gallup history. An overwhelming majority, 76%, think it's a bad time to buy a house. I would actually take a poll with you guys, but I kind of know what most of you think. Gappin, the Bank of America economist, said that if the US economy achieves the soft landing that he expects, meaning inflation cools without triggering a recession, there is a risk that home prices will rise even more than anticipated. On the other hand, if the durability of the recovery has been overestimated and a recession is on the way, home prices could tumble and affordability would ease. But obviously, you don't want to go through a recession to have better housing affordability, he said. Obviously, we don't want to go through a recession because that will affect more than just home prices. And it would really hurt those who have bought a home in the last few years, which makes sense why so many buyers regret buying their home. If you missed last week's video on buyer regrets, definitely check that out next. It's really interesting. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye!